Food obviously has a massive impact on your health and longevity, but there are still some foods that might shorten your lifespan, which I'm going to cover in this video. It's showtime. Number one are sugar sweetened beverages, including fruit juices. Sugar sweetened beverage consumption, such as sodas, including fruit juices, is associated with increased risk of mortality. Consuming sugar sweetened beverages less than one time per month hasn't been seen to increase the risk of mortality, but doing so one to two times a day increases the risk by 14%, and more than two times a day does so by 21%. Those consuming over 10% of their daily calories from sugary beverages have been seen to have a 40 4% higher risk of coronary heart disease mortality and 14% higher risk of all-cause mortality compared to those getting less than 5% of their daily calories from sugary beverages. So liquid sugar has a massively negative impact on your longevity and just overall health. It increases the risk of obesity, diabetes, kidney disease, heart disease, tooth decay and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Now it is true that people who consume sugar sweetened beverages follow other unhealthy lifestyle practices. But when it comes to fruit juices then generally fruit juices are considered to be healthy. They're not considered to be as unhealthy as sodas. But you can still find that fruit juice consumption is still associated with increased risk of mortality. Now the exception is probably that if you make yourself just a freshly squeezed cup of orange juice or something like that, then you can probably get away with it if you have other healthy lifestyle habits. But if you buy the packaged fruit concentrate that doesn't really have actual fruit in it, it's just added sugar and a fruit concentrate, then that is generally not very good for you. However, consumption of whole fruit is linked to lower risk of all-cause mortality, cardiovascular disease mortality and cancer. Replacing 5% of your calories from whole fruit with fruit juice has been seen to increase mortality risk by 8 to 9%. So the best way to eat fruit is from the whole fruit sources, not from fruit juices. The second food group are refined grains. A 2021 pure study across 21 countries found that the highest quartile of refined grain intake over 350 grams a day or about 7 servings per day is associated with 27% higher risk of all-cause mortality and 33% higher risk of major cardiovascular events compared to the lowest quartile of intake which is less than 50 grams a day. However, higher intakes of white rice such as over 450 grams a day versus less than 150 grams a day and whole grains weren't associated with any adverse health outcomes. In China, replacing traditional grains like rice with modern grains like wheat has been seen to increase the risk of cardiovascular disease. Whole grain consumption in Scandinavian countries and the United States is linked to lower risk of all-cause mortality and cardiovascular disease mortality. So whole grains and traditional grains are safe, whereas refined grains are something you want to limit. Next food group is ultra-processed food. Ultra-processed food intake is associated with increased risk of cardiovascular events and all-cause mortality. A 2023 meta-analysis discovered that the highest quartile of ultra-processed food intake was linked to a 35% higher risk of cardiovascular disease events and 21% higher risk of all-cause mortality compared to the lowest quartile. Every additional serving of ultra-processed food, one serving being 50 grams a day, after a single serving increased the risk of cardiovascular disease events by 4% and all-cause mortality by 2%. Based on this data then, our on one to two servings of ultra processed food per day is generally going to be fine. You can get away with it, especially if you have a healthy diet otherwise. But every additional increment, every additional increase after that seems to increase your risk irrespective of the calorie intake. Individuals in the highest quartile of ultra processed food consumption, which comprises about 27.8% of their daily diet, have been seen to have a 61% higher risk of dementia and 75% higher risk of Alzheimer's disease compared to the lowest quartile of 8.6%. 6% of their daily diet, even after adjusting for calorie intake. So usually ultra processed food has a lot more calories and you can say that it's the calories that increases the risk of mortality and Alzheimer's disease for example. But in this study they actually adjusted for the calorie intake so it was specifically the higher proportion of ultra processed food in the diet irrespective of the calorie intake that led to the higher risk. Next food group is fried food. Frequent consumption of fried foods especially fried chicken, fried fish or shellfish is linked to a higher risk of all cause mortality and cardiovascular mortality. Eating one serving of fried food 
a day compared to no consumption is linked to an 8% higher risk of all-cause mortality and cardiovascular disease mortality. Fried food consumption four to six times a week is linked to a 28% higher risk of heart failure and 39% higher risk of type 2 diabetes. Eating fried potatoes two to three times a week is associated with a 95% higher risk of all-cause mortality and over three times per week is associated with a 126% higher risk compared to less than one time per month. However, in Spain, fried food consumption that's cooked in olive oil or sunflower oil isn't associated with higher all-cause mortality or coronary heart disease. In the Mediterranean countries, people use olive oil and sunflower oil for cooking, whereas most fast food restaurants in the world use other refined oils such as canola oil, which can be more inflammatory. So it appears that the way you prepare your food and how you cook it has a major impact on its health benefits. Which brings me to the next point, which are advanced glycation end products. Advanced glycation end products or AGEs are molecules that get created during high temperature cooking through what's called the Maillard reaction. AGEs are implicated in several chronic diseases such as cardiovascular disease, Alzheimer's, renal dysfunction, diabetes, and stroke. AGEs are also the biggest degraders of your collagen and they can cross-link collagen to promote vascular stiffness and the formation of wrinkles. Foods of the fat group such as butter, oils, and nuts have the highest amount of AGEs, followed by meats and meat substitutes with carbohydrates having the least. Broiling and frying result in the greatest formation of AGEs, followed by roasting and boiling. Dietary AGEs may directly contribute to the development of age-related diseases through increased inflammation and oxidative stress. Plasma carboxylmethyl lysine, or CML, which is a major AGE, is linked to increased all-cause mortality among the elderly without diabetes. Those in the highest tertile of plasma CML had a 68% higher all-cause mortality and 74% higher cardiovascular disease mortality compared to the lower two tertiles. Elevated fasting CML levels also predict the development of diabetes after adjusting for multiple risk factors for diabetes. The most important thing that determines AGE formation is the way you cook your food. Broiled beef, for example, has up to 16 times more AGEs than raw beef. Roasted chicken has 8 times more AGEs than boiled chicken. 100 grams of french fries from McDonald's contains 10 times less AGEs than 13 grams of fried bacon. So the best advice I can give you is that try to minimize the consumption of overcooked and overfried, especially high temperature cooked and broiled proteins and fats. The best way to prepare these foods, proteins and fats, is to actually boil them. Obviously, it doesn't taste as good as fried or broiled food does, but it's significantly healthier. Overall, these foods all have to be taken in the right context. If you're not overeating calories, then your body is able to counteract some of the harm caused by consuming these foods. But if you are really trying to optimize your health and longevity with diet, then make sure you implement these rules that I just share with you. But do you want to add healthy years to your life? If yes, then I'm looking for more people who want to increase their health span. If you're interested, then email me the word health to info at and I'll send you the details. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.